Hey guys, welcome to another episode of HubSpot's Inbound Now. I'm your host, David Wells. This week, again, no guest, another scheduling conflict, but don't worry, I have a couple of great guests coming up for you. Um, Aaron Stroud, he is the head of location-based marketing at WCG. Um, he'll be coming up next episode. And then we have Brian Clark of Copy Blogger coming at you, and also Joseline Mane, who is the tweet up and local meetup expert. He'll share his tips and tricks on how to really tie online with offline stuff. But today I'm gonna dive into advanced Twitter search techniques so you can really dive in and find where the conversation's happening and filter out all the noise. So I'm gonna show you some of my favorite tips and tricks on how to do that. So this episode will be a little bit shorter like last week but we're gonna dive in. I'm gonna show you some of the tools that I use on a day-to-day -day basis and hopefully enjoy. If you do like this format, please leave a comment in the blog post or the video below. And definitely don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy the show Inbound Now. So without further ado, here are my favorite tips and tricks on how to search Twitter and find relevant business conversations around your industry. So the first place to start when searching Twitter is obviously search.twitter.com. It's where you can actually learn some of these advanced search queries to filter out a lot of the noise. So just to show you guys an example here, I'm just gonna search for the word WordPress. Um, I do a lot of stuff with WordPress and I wanna see what conversations happening around it. And the search with just the word WordPress, I see a lot of irrelevant information, a lot of people auto posting their blog, a lot of just links out to stuff that isn't really part of the conversation. Maybe I wanna read that post, but it's not someone that I want to actually engage with on Twitter. So what we want to do is actually refine that search. You can use Twitter's built-in advanced search functionality to exclude some words, exclude links, uh, you know, geotarget the exact search, which is useful. But once you start to learn the, the actual queries, it gets a lot faster and easier to do. So I'm going to go back into my original search, and I'm actually going to filter out all of the links in that Twitter search with a minus HTTP. That's gonna get rid of everyone auto-posting blogs and retweeting other people's stuff and actually find people talking about the specific keyword in question. So as you can see here, I filter out all that noise and now I actually see people's statements. Um, but we wanna actually filter this a little bit more and actually look for people asking questions about our business. So I'm gonna go back into the search and I'm gonna do a WordPress minus HTTP with a space and a question mark. So what this is gonna do is pull back everyone asking questions about my keyword and getting rid of all those links and auto-posted blogs. So as you can see here, it's actually pulling back all those questions and I actually have two people looking for a WordPress designer. Um, these are people that are actively searching for the type of business um, that I provide and I could actually go ahead and engage with those people. Even if it's not someone looking directly for a developer or to you know, hire me for business, I can actually find relevant conversations or people looking for help in a certain area. And if I were to just take a couple minutes out of my day and help them out or point them to a handy resource, you can bet your bottom dollar that they're more than likely going to follow my account or maybe even refer business my way. And it only takes a couple seconds to actually find these questions and answer them. So a couple other advanced search queries that'll help you find relevant conversations around your industry would be your keyword, the word recommend, and you wanna filter out those links again, so keep minus HTTP in there, and go ahead and search. So again, it's pulling back relevant conversations, getting rid of all those links with my keyword, and it's actually people asking for recommendations on a particular topic. Another variation of that would be the word suggest. So my keyword suggest minus HTTP, go ahead and do a search. And again, it's people asking for suggestions around that certain keyword topic. And finally, the last one I like to use is the word anyone. So my keyword space anyone minus HTTP, that's gonna pull back, uh, again, 
people asking for suggestions and relevant conversation. You might have to tweak these search queries a little bit, um, and there's probably tons and tons of other variations out there. Uh, I want to thank Mr. Christopher S. Penn for pointing me in the direction of these three. Definitely check out his blog at ChristopherSPin.com, and he also has a great podcast with Mr. John Wall, Marketing Over Coffee. Highly recommend it. So now that we have a basic understanding of how to use the advanced searched operators of Twitter, there's actually a lot of tools out there that'll help you do this a lot easier than going to search.twitter.com. So I'm gonna walk through some of those right now. So one of my favorite tools to scan relevant Twitter conversations um, is a relatively new one, inboxq.com. It's a browser extension or add-on for Firefox and Chrome. My good friend Ricardo Bueno, a past guest on the show, actually pointed me off to this one. But basically, once you install it in Chrome or Firefox, you'll have a little icon in your browser here. Once you click on it and connect your Twitter account in the settings area, you want to set up your campaigns. And so we'll take a look at these campaigns. It's the exact same search operators that we had in the Twitter search. And you can set up multiple keyword variations, uh, different campaigns in here with uh, multiple keywords per line. And what it actually does, it'll actually ping you with a notification every time there's a new question on that keyword. So anytime you have a notification up here, you can see and kind of scan down the questions here to see if there's anything that you can quickly answer or if there's someone actually asking for business on Twitter. The other great thing about it is you can actually mark it as to do if you don't have time to answer it right then or share it with a friend that actually is in that line of business and actually refer the, that person to them. So Inbox Q is a very, very handy browser tool that I highly recommend installing and setting up your keyword campaigns so you can get notified when those questions arise and be there to, to answer them. So the next tool I use to listen in on social media conversations is a tool called Hootsuite. It's a way to manage multiple social media accounts in one place. But the way I use it is actually to set up those, again, those search queries to, again, scan very quickly and easily in this column layout of relevant conversations that I want to jump in on. You could also do this in a tool called TweetDeck in the column layout just like this. So this is a great way to set up a listening station in a tab layout where you can put multiple keywords on one page and just tab through and see if there's any new conversation happening in your industry around your keywords. So there are a lot of ways and a lot of tools out there to actually listen in on the social media conversation. HubSpot has a tool. There's another tool out there called Sendable. The list goes on and on and on. The point is not about the tools. It's about how to use these advanced search queries in whatever tool that you are using to find those relevant conversations. So if you take anything away from this particular episode, it's about learning how to use those advanced search operators to find relevant conversations and to filter out the noise that you're hearing and actually engage in the conversation, answer people's questions, become a thought leader in your space where people are, are gonna follow you, you're gonna build up that audience and ultimately become the go-to person in that space. That's the idea on listening in on social media and being helpful, giving before you get. So that about does it for you know searching Twitter, finding those relevant conversations. Um, the next tip and the next tool I'm gonna show is more about finding people, relevant people on Twitter. So a tool that I like to use all the time, it's called followerwonk.com. And what you can actually do is search Twitter bios for particular keywords. So here I've searched for the keyword marketing and it actually sorts by number of followers so relatively you know the influence of that person it'll actually pull back a, a pretty targeted list of people that hey I might want to actually engage in their their conversation might, might want to get to know them a little bit better maybe increase the chance that they'll actually retweet some of my stuff or allow me to guest post on their site just building that relationship and finding the influential people in your space so followerwonk.com I'd highly recommend checking it out and trying to find some relevant um, influential people in your space. Two other useful tools just like that would be WeFollow and Twello. They're Twitter directories to find people 
uh, in a particular industry or space as well. Um, I like to use follower wonk from the get-go, then I uh, refer back to some Twitter directories to find those relevant people. And remember, when you do find these relevant conversations and these relevant people to connect with, definitely reach out in a helpful way. Don't spam them with your content, don't spam them with salesy messages. The entire point here is to be very, very helpful, become a resource, and become the go-to person in your space. There's nothing worse than someone answering a question with a sales pitch or a link to a product page that's gonna turn people off immediately. That's not what social media is about. Remember to be very helpful, and when they are ready to make that purchasing decision, they're gonna think about the person that was the most helpful when they're trying to make that decision that pointed them to the most resources, the most unbiased resources, and ultimately decide to go with them. So I will leave you guys with that. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Inbound Now. Again, we'll have guests on the next episode. It's either going to be Brian Clark of Copyblogger or Aaron Strout. If you like this episode, don't forget to subscribe. You can subscribe via iTunes. You can subscribe via YouTube. You can subscribe via email or Facebook or Twitter. Anywhere online, almost, you can subscribe to the show. I appreciate your continued support and watching of the show, or listening for that matter. These episodes, sorry for the people listening in. Hopefully I was descriptive enough for you to take some actionable items away to actually search and find those relevant conversations. So if you enjoyed the episode, leave a comment or a suggestion in the comments below wherever you see this or tweet at me at David Wells. I appreciate it, and I'll see you guys next time.